listen to Europe's number one pro wrestling podcast, Zeppelo Substitute, bringing you the best in pro wrestling interviews, news, and opinions with Mr. CB Knight. It is indeed night time with me, Mr. Stevie Knight. How are you doing? Oh, I'm good. I'm pretty good. Although outside it's absolutely chucking it down. And I mean throwing it down in Cyprus. Yes, in the summer. In fact, from May right through till about December, it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, but when it rains, it really, really rains. Uh, and today it is really, really raining. Uh, I'm in a bit of a foul mood today, to be honest with you. Uh, reading people's New Year's uh, resolutions and things. As I mentioned on the last podcast with Nathan Cruz, uh, I'm on a bit of a personal journey at the moment for the first time since I was 22 years old uh, to be pretty much drug-free. And I don't mean heroin or crack or anything like that. Uh, I mean the copious amounts of painkillers that I've been on from being about 22 years old. Uh, I had a match with Jason Cross at the uh, second show uh, when Sabu was over with Rob Van Dam. Uh, and uh, really, really suffered during that match, uh, being silly and landing very hard on concrete floors and things. And then while being in America with Kerry Cabrero in 1999, uh, I broke my neck. Uh, so I've suffered, suffered for my art of wrestling, uh, as you may say. Um, and I'm in a lot of pain. Most of the time my day consists of a lot of pain um, and taking a lot of pills and drinking a lot of morphine and things. Uh, but for the first time I've decided it's time to get off all of it. Uh, and I'm doing very, very well. All the morphine is gone, uh, and I'm down to over half off the rest of the things that I was on. So it's all going very well. But what really pisses me off is reading people complaining about stopping smoking. Oh, it's hard to stop smoking. Oh, it's really difficult. Believe me, my friend, you should try coming off copious amounts of heroin-based painkillers, and then you will never complain about stopping smoking. There you go. Rant over. This is double duty this week. Literally, I put out the Nathan Cruz interview a couple of days ago. Doing very, very well. Uh, back into the iTunes top 50 for that one. So absolutely amazing. And double duty because the same night that I recorded with Nathan Cruz, I also spoke uh, to what, somebody I would class as a, as a modern-day uh, legend in British wrestling. A guy that I wrestled many, many times. You'll uh, hear our familiar... Uh, what's that word? Familiarity? I can never say it. Familiarity? Something like that. Familiarity? Forget it, forget it. Uh, you can hear our um, familiarity? <laughs> I can't say it. It's a very hard word. Anyway, you get the idea. Uh, and speaking to Jody, we wrestled each other many times. We did our first ever TV show together, uh, and it was really, really nice to talk to Jody. So I'm not going to waffle too long because you've also heard from me once this week already. Uh, so this is a, a fascinating chat. Uh, with a guy that really, really uh, changed British wrestling uh, and showed people, along with Johnny Storm, I have to say, uh, that showed people um, the flying ability of British wrestlers. Uh, and I do tell Jody during this because I know that a lot of wrestlers nowadays look up to Jody um, and think he changed British wrestling for them quite a lot uh, and let it be possible for the smaller guys, the flying guys, uh, to really get noticed. Uh, so this absolutely fantastic chat with Jody Fleisch. Must say, we started off on Skype uh, and it was very good quality. We were recording well, but Jody uh, is robbing his internet from somebody else's flat. That's what I think anyway. Uh, and it kept cutting off. Uh, so I had to give him a call back on his landline. So you'll hear the quality does change for anybody uh, who is a fan of British wrestling. Uh, since about the late 90s, you will know who Jody Fleisch is. Uh, so sit back, enjoy with Jerome. I've been with my missus three years, no kids. Uh, no kids? No, nah, it's getting late, man. <laughs> How old are you? 30, 35 35, 35 Yeah, man. God, it's amazing, mate, isn't it? Who can, uh, that was 16 years ago we did Crystal Palace. Oh, God, I was going to ask you when that was, to be honest. Isn't that absolutely unbelievable? I'm, I, am, I am 40 in 20 days. Mate, it's, it's mad to think of, you know what I mean? I'm sure it is this for all of us that are involved with all we were the young we were the young guys taking over the world and now we're like the old bastards that's it that's it want moving on get you know, <laughs> get get rid I wish these old bastards would stop wrestling and let the young ones come yeah, in you know yeah yeah I mean? yeah I've, I've even been the one that I'm, I'm now the one that sits in the changing room just on a fold out chair and doesn't move for anything apart from to get up and do my match I can't believe it <laughs> tell him just calm down don't do so much <laughs> yeah <laughs> that that coming from Jody Fleisch. You see what there I mean? It's like, when did this happen? You know? 
But it, yeah. honest, time is a, honestly for I am forty and twenty days, and that to me is it, it, it's. Um, we, we, we'll we'll stick this in now. We're, we're we're just going from now. All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, forty to me just kind of signifies the end of <laughs> any, any dream that I ever had of, of anything in oh, life. Right. <laughs> all I wanted to do was wrestle and go to Japan, and I, I you know I gave up on that ten years ago. But 40 really means that there's no comeback. Right. You know what it's I mean? good you're keeping a positive outlook on the whole thing, mate. <laughs> oh, mate, it's death. Oh, it's you're doing death, well. I wouldn't have had you at 40, to be honest. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, you would have been at 55 or something like that. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so, joining me, I, I am absolutely chuffed to have uh, an old friend of mine. As we started off saying, Jody, we've probably met, I reckon, probably 20 times in our lifetime. Yeah. But we usually work together when we met. We work with each other loads of times when we met. No, no. Not as many as you and Johnny, possibly. Not quite, not quite. No. <laughs> but, <laughs> Maybe yeah. like a thousand to one ratio or yeah, something like close, that. it's close, it's close, but it's not quite up then. <laughs> and we shared our first ever uh, TV that we both did together as well. We was on with each other on our first ever TV, so awesome I think we've, you, 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 are, you hold a little place in my heart for making me look like a million dollars on that show. Yeah, you know what, and it, it doesn't sound it, because it was pretty much a squash match, but you made me look pretty good as well, man. Yeah, you robbed my Japan place. Yeah. That's, that's what it, you did. You robbed my Japan. I, I don't know what you were told at the time. I was told, and I don't, this is, see, God, this is 16 years ago. It's so irrelevant now. Right. I was told that Jason Cross was going to Japan. Right. And that I was going to Japan. Uh, and I was on with you. And I was told to give you nothing at all. Uh, absolutely <laughs> not a bean. Just to slap him about, give him all your moves, <laughs> right, yeah, and that's the end of it. Yeah, you're good at following I, orders. <laughs> I, I couldn't do. I, I I couldn't completely do it. I said no. Do some of your acrobatics. Do some of your bits. Next thing, the bastard's in Japan. <laughs> and I'm sat at home. You know what I mean? <laughs> Pulled the rug out from under your feet on that one. No, I didn't. No one mentioned anything to me about anything, any Japan work back then. It was only afterwards that I got told that they wanted to use me. That's why I was going to ask you, like who. Yeah, I don't know where it all came from. I, but there was those Jap guys there, wasn't yeah, there? There was, was um, Brandon Iwa, who's passed away. Yeah, now. he has. Yeah, he's the crab guy, isn't yeah, he? he yeah, he's the crab guy. He was a really good guy as well. He's a great lad. I got to know him quite well when I was over there. Uh, oh man, this is turning a bit sad now because Ted Tanabe yeah. was the other one, wasn't he? The referee. And he's gone as well, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah. And again, yeah. couldn't happen to a nicer guy. I spent a lot of time yeah. with him, and he was the man. Uh, who's God. the other one? Tiger Mask. Uh, Tiger Mask was there, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And Chris Daniels. That was the. Oh, yeah, they yeah. were the imports for the day. So yeah, and I he think. Had hair. Uh, yeah, and he had hair, and he had a good attitude as well. It was amazing what time <laughs> does, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Oh, marvelous! So you see, we've got memories. We've got memories. Let, let's go right back. We met first time Crystal Palace, uh, which was where you appeared to me. Uh, and uh, Johnny appeared to me and Alex Shane and Doug Williams uh, because you'd all come from Hammerlock. Yeah. How did you end up at Hammerlock? Right, me personally, I was a massive fan of wrestling, as is, I guess, everyone who wants to get into it. There weren't any training schools, so I turned up at Olympic Freestyle Wrestling, me and my mate Scotty Rock, who you remember him, don't you? I do, I do, yeah, a little baldy guy, yeah? Yeah, that's the one. Uh, so... Basically, yeah, we turned up at Olympic Freestyle Wrestling, done that for two years, uh, and just basically asked around, and then at some point someone told us of a school that's running out of Sittingbourne in Kent, so uh, yeah, one Sunday me and Scotty Rock turned up to the school, walked through the doors, and then there's a ring set up, and in that ring is Doug Williams and Titan, I'm not sure, now obviously you'll know Doug, I do remember Titan. You do? Yeah, I do. Sure really it's... big guy in black, yeah. Yeah, yeah, massive, like, six foot eight dude. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Out of everywhere. So that was pretty immense to turn up. Literally, as we walk through the doors, Doug and Titan are going full pelt in a ring in a very small room. So straight away, I was like, yeah, this is good. This is me. And, uh, yeah, just went on from there. And you obviously had, because, you know, anybody that's ever seen you wrestle, and obviously when I first wrestled you, I thought, my God, this kid can do such amazing things. What is your background to be able to do such incredible moves? Uh, well, thanks, first of all. It uh, means a lot coming from you. But uh, my move, I guess it goes way back. I was always sporty. I guess I've done a lot of agility-based stuff, this is going to sound weird, in Olympic freestyle wrestling. There's loads of... Uh, 
like towards the start of the sessions, we do loads of floor work. We do forward rolls, backward rolls, cartwheels, hand springs, head springs, backflips, that kind of thing. I also I went to to college at a place called Circus Space where we done. I got to ask. This is true, is it? I remember I used to rib you about this, but this is true. You did do some kind of circus. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a total. It's not a complete rib. There's some truth in it because basically <laughs> it was a two year course. I stuck out a year of it and then basically left that to go to Andre's school to go to Hamelock. Uh Yeah, so that covered like acro, like some tumbling, some acrobatics. Uh, and I've just always been really sporty and, you know, from from a really young age, like, I've always been the one who can do all the flips and all that stuff. I've been around it a long time now as well, obviously with wrestling on top of that. So, yeah, I guess uh, I guess that's how I learned. It certainly put you in good stead because, you, God, I mean, I'm going to sound like I'm kissing your ass here, but I, I do genuinely believe you are kind of the Sabu of British wrestling where you don't get the credit you really deserve, you know? Man, you know what? To be honest, I, I, I feel like I've got more than my fair share of credit, man. I mean, I even, uh, sometimes I can't even respond to it because it's became so, so routine. And there's an innate feeling, Steve, that I might not be completely deserving of it all. Having said that, um, you know, I appreciate it. And, yeah, it's been like 19 years of my life now. So I've really, obviously, I've enjoyed it. It's Must be, yeah. If we're, if we're going back to saying we did that first TV show together 16 years ago, that will have absolutely been about right, 19, 20 years. It's yeah. absolutely incredible. Uh, so, obviously, you get down to Hammerlock. Doug's there. Who are the, some of the other guys that were there? Because that time period where you came from, yeah. uh, a lot of those guys have gone on to great success in British wrestling. Yeah, they have. I wouldn't have. Um, I, I don't think any of us would have known it at the time. But yeah, walking in, there was faces like obviously Andre was there, Andre Baker, uh, Justin Richard was there, Alex Shane. I met Alex for the very fir- very first time in Victoria Station, en route to that first training session. <laughs> in Sittingbourne, so yeah, there's lots of faces, lots of memories, lots of cool people, including yourself, man. Not from and obviously West. Johnny Storm was there. Was he there at the time when you first started? Did he come later? No, no, he was there from a bit before me, actually. Him and the guy called Robbie the Rocker Thomas. I'm not sure if you remember him or not. Know the name? Don't remember him. Right, but uh, yeah. no, yeah, he already he was already there. And uh, if I remember rightly, there was kind of a funny thing. The way Andre. Because we were both younger guys, both pretty skinny, uh, and both flew around quite a bit, considering the time that that it was. Uh, And I think Andre cleverly... Yeah, Andre made quite a few attempts to sort of play us off against each other. Uh, Kind of, I guess it ended up working in a positive way. Um, But yeah, no, it was... um, There's a lot of people there, and it's... Yeah, it's went on to be known through time as pretty much a who's who of the British wrestling scene back then. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. So, obviously, that all came to an end. When I interviewed Doug, he said he came out, he was like the first guy to leave. Pretty much everybody left afterwards. That's it. Um, would that be about right? Yep, 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 I'd second that. Uh, Doug left first shortly after Johnny went. Uh, and I think I was the one to leave after him. Alex would have left around that time as well, or am I thinking, did he stick around? No, Alex and Guy Thunder, uh, they stuck around a little more, but yeah, it was certainly that sort of time when Doug left first, and then, yeah, pretty much most of us ended up gradually flying the coop. And we all ended up, uh, not me, because obviously I started off in a different way to you, doing rings and everything on the usual British circuit, but we we all kind of met up at a TV taping uh, for Crystal Palace on a fantastic station called Live TV. There was topless darts, there was bouncing weathermen, uh, midget weathermen, not just any old weatherman, a midget weatherman telling you know telling you the weather while bouncing up and down. Yeah, it's really what, intellectual quality. Stuff, yeah. Quality entertainment. Yeah. But I mean, that must have been, I don't know if it, it was for me at the time. I remember turning up to Crystal Palace and seeing this big place, you know, a couple of thousand people there, right. uh, the screens and all this kind of thing. What did you think when you turned up at Crystal Palace? Actually, you know what? I was just as impressed. I would have been just as impressed as you were. But uh, pretty much every week at Hammerlock, and this is no diss on Andre, because obviously he's, um, he's done a lot for the British wrestling scene over the years. 
even after his death. But he 